FDA requirements that you wear a hat through our journey. If you do not get a paper hat at the door, please raise your hand and I'll make sure that you get one. No food or drink during the tour. Please remain seated. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the train at all times. We ask that you stay aboard the train with your seatbelts buckled and please do not disembark and have been instructed to do so. There is warehouse activity all around us and that can be dangerous on foot. You are welcome to take photography today. I just ask that you please turn off your flash. Also, who's on Snapchat? Well, if you take a picture and swipe left, you can find our Jelly Belly filter. All right, is everyone ready to go? My name is Joey, and I'm your engineer and guide on your journey. We're going to have some fun. Today, we'll explore what goes into the magical and often complicated process of creating the 100 plus flavors of the original gourmet jelly beans. Before we jump into candy making, candy makers, and some pretty cool machines, we want to share a little bit more about how our company came to be. Did you know that our company is family owned and operated? There are several members of the family working in the business, and you'll get to meet a few of them now. Welcome to Jelly Belly. Thank you for coming on the tour today. We are family owned and operated with the fourth, fifth, and sixth generations working in the business. Hi, I'm Bill Kelly. My cousin Herm Roland and I are fourth generation candy makers. I'm Herb Roland. My cousin and I share the same great grandpa, Gustav Gold. Hi, my name is Herm Roland Jr. Hi, I'm Ryan Roland. My name is Christy Roland. I'm Lisa Roland Brazier. I'm Trevor Parkinson. I'm Kayla Parkinson. I'm Becky Joffer. I'm Andy Joffer. I'm Justin Joffer. Chris Rowling. But it all started with Gustav Goldwitz. He settled in Belleville, Illinois, and he was joined by his brother Albert, who sold their candies from a horse-drawn cart. Gustav's sons then entered the business, and in 1898, they formed their own candy company. Over the years, we've had multiple factory locations. Midland Park, New Jersey, Kansas City, Missouri, uh, Brooklyn, New York, Rochester, New York. We opened these factories to meet local demand. In those days, it was much simpler to start a factory than it is today. When you think back in the 1800s, the transportation aspect was pretty incredible. It was covered wagon, maybe train, uh, didn't have trucks and cars. So they would make, they'd build a factory in a place so that they could take care of the regional area. Candy corn and melted cream candies carried our company through two world wars and the depression. In the 1960s, they decided that they needed to diversify our product line. So around 1965, we began making jelly beans. The original little jelly bean was called the Herman Gullet's mini jelly bean. They popped up the flavors in the center of the bean using ingredients like coconut flakes, coffee, orange juice. Finally, and most importantly, he named them Jelly Belly Jelly Beans. We purchased the Jelly Belly trademark from David Klein and Cal Lieberman in 1980. Today we make over a hundred flavors of Jelly Beans. The Jelly Belly brand is sold in more than 80 countries around the world. Jelly Belly Candy Company has three factories. Fairfield, California, North Chicago, Illinois. Our factory in Thailand makes candy for the rest of the world. We have strong ties in the Midwest. We have owned our factory down the road to North Chicago, Illinois for over 100 years. Much of the candy you will see here today was made just 20 miles away. Today we have seven generations that have worked in the company. My grandfather worked in the company until his death in 1961. You probably noticed the Jelly Belly art pieces we have all around our visitor center. Our private collection of art includes more than 60 pieces. We have an artist in residence, Kristen Cummings, who we commissioned to make these works of art. She places each of me in my hand, and they can take around 75 to 100 hours to finish one piece. Each candy mosaic is made from approximately 10 to 12,000 Jelly Belly beans. Now, our company wasn't the first in the Jelly Beans. The earliest one are the Jelly Beans that our archive is this house, is from the Civil War era in 1851 in Boston. A man named William Schraff promoted the sending of jelly beans to soldiers in the Union Army. We didn't bring jelly beans to the market until over 105 years later. Today we make around 50 million every year. Let us show you how jelly belly beans get their start. It all starts here. 
This is where the center of a Jelly Belly jelly bean begins. You know what they say, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Our kitchen is pretty toasty, and there's a reason why it's so warm. Candy makers create what's called a slurry. That's a hot liquid candy mixture made with water, sugar, corn syrup, and cornstarch. Each Jelly Belly bean might start out with the same four ingredients, but each flavor is unique with its own special secret recipe. Large kettles are filled with the slurry before candy makers carefully and precisely add flavors and colors to bring each individual flavor to life. For example, peach puree is added right to the kettle of slurry here. Real ingredients like this are used whenever possible to flavor and color what will become the center of the bean. For example, we use real blueberry puree for blueberry, real coffee for cappuccino, and real chocolate for chocolate pudding. The list goes on, as you can see. In many cases, additional flavor and color are added to create the most accurate flavor possible. The slurry mixes together with all this flavor and color. Before it moves on to the next step, candy makers ensure consistency between batches by testing small samples on boards like this one. When it's all said and done, they will have crafted 400 pounds of slurry in one kettle. That's enough for 200,000 centers, or nine trips to the top of the Empire State Building. That's a lot of jelly beans. To your left, you will see some of our old candy kettles and cooking equipment. With more than 100 years in the candy making business, we have a pretty large collection of equipment. However, all Jelly Belly beans have one thing in common, and that's their signature shape. Here, we'll show you just how that shape gets its start. All that flavorful, hot liquid candy slurry is gravity fed downstairs and deposited into small, jelly bean shaped molds. But wait a minute, where did all those small indentations come from? Let's back up a minute and I'll show you. This machine, called a mogul, sends wooden trays through, dumping in cornstarch and leveling it off like flour in your baking pot. A metal plate called a mold is the positive impression of the candy shape. In this case, it's jelly beans. And in other cases, it's molds for candy corn, fruit shapes, hearts, Christmas trees, and even a giant tarantula for some special gummies you'll probably see later in the store. The mold stamps the impression into the cornstarch. A moment later, the liquid candy that came from upstairs in the kitchen is deposited into that impression, filling it to the top. And boom! The center of the jelly belly bean has taken shape. There are up to 1,320 jelly bean impressions per tray. Once they're filled, the trays holding the centers are stacked and taken to a heated dry room where they'll rest overnight at more than 100 degrees before they're firm enough to move on to the next stage of the process. After a day or so of resting, the trays are put back into the mogul machine. The mogul tips the trays over, separating the Jelly Belly Jelly Bean centers from all that cornstarch. The cornstarch has been taken off to be used again later in more starch trays. The tray continues its journey through the mogul and is immediately reused for a new batch of jelly bean centers. As for the newly freed beans, well, their journey is far from over. There's a little bit of jostling, a steam bath to make them a bit sticky, a sugar shower to give them a layer so they don't all stick together, and finally, they're on their way to rest again. Jelly Belly has been to a lot of places like the White House and even outer space. Belly have also been on the fashion runway. Through we partnerships with the French Pastry School, Chicago Packers School Matters Coordinator Program, and Candy Alley Store. Take a look to your left, and you'll get a sneak preview of what we're about to see in this next video. This is where the magic happens. All those metal drums you see, the ones that look like miniature cement mixers, have a big job to do. Candy makers tumble 250 pounds of chewy Jelly Belly Jelly Bean centers in these spinning drums, adding flavorful and colorful syrups and sugar. The combination of alternating between these ingredients and all that tumbling builds up the outer soft shell of the Jelly Belly Jelly Bean and most importantly maintains that Jelly Belly's signature dimple in the bean. 
This is where the science of food meets the art of candy making. Candy makers can tell, just by looking at the colorful batch as it spins in the pans, what it needs next. Is it time to add more sugar? Is it ready for more syrup? Everything has to be timed just right or, uh-oh, it won't take the right shape. Or worse yet, it will all stick together. Luckily, the candy makers in this department have spent years, and in some cases decades, perfecting their craft. They check and recheck their handiwork until the shell is perfectly applied. And once the jelly beans have their flavorful outer shell, wouldn't you know it? They're 40% larger than when they started. After panning, the beans rest a bit more before they're brought here to the finishing department. This is where they get their glossy shine. The jelly beans still have a dusting of sugar from that panning process they experienced a few days ago. Now, candy makers tumble them in pans again, but this time they're adding syrups and food grade glaze and wax. The combination of these ingredients and all that tumbling gives the beans their signature shiny look. It's a little like polishing rocks in a rock tumbler. And the noise is similar too. 380 pounds of jelly beans per pan are helped in the drying process by the attached blowers. Once the beans are nice and shiny, workers unload them into trays of 25 pounds and stack them on carts. And then it's time once again to rest. The stacks of colorful jelly beans are a picturesque reminder of just how many different true-to-life flavors there are. When this entire area is filled, it can hold more than 200 million jelly beans. That's enough to stretch from our factory in Fairfield to our other factory in North Chicago, Illinois. Watch how the candy find their way home. Welcome to the packaging department. Wow! The beans tumble around a bit, and as they do, are moved toward the back of this very large metal drum. There, two specially devised screens await them. The first is sized so that any candy that's too small to be the perfect Jelly Belly Jelly Bean falls through. The second screen allows only the perfect sizes through. As the beans tumble, they either fall through one of the grates, or if they're too large to fit, they're kicked into a container at the back of the drum. Those pieces are still perfectly tasty and will soon find their candy destiny fulfilled as belly flops. You'll find them in the store after the tour. Under the sponge roller and are lightly kissed with that logo. This printer can print 20,000 logos per minute. Individual flavors of jelly belly beans are loaded on this 100-foot long conveyor. Beans travel through the conveyor system and fall into a spinning drum. All this tumbling mixes those delicious flavors together to form an assorted mix. We get 49 flavors, 30, 20, sours, bean boozled, tropical, you name it. This is how we mix up all your favorite collections. Each mix and package size has its own calculation and ratio of flavors needed to ensure you end up with as many different flavors as possible in your bag. All those true to life flavors of Jelly Belly Jelly Beans are loaded in giant bins and lifted by water up to the tippy top. One of those giant containers holds about 1,700 pounds. All of the Jelly Belly beans are weighed and dropped into newly formed bags, which are then cut and sealed around the candy almost immediately. With hundreds of bags and boxes flowing out of here every minute, it takes a lot of knowledgeable people to keep it running. Jelly Belly machine operators and mechanics are constantly helping to modify, fix, and maintain these machines. And workers are busy making sure everything runs smoothly and is packaged and sent out properly. Let's take a look at the long journey a box takes to ship out to stores near you. That's a long journey for such a tiny bean. This longest journey through our factory has traveled farther than we will on the Jelly Belly Express today. We're on to bigger and better things. Although we can't eat these giant jelly beans, and trust me, I've asked, did you know if we were to lay out the 15 billion Jelly Belly beans that we make each year end to end, they will circle the earth more than five times? And up here on your left are some of the hardest working jelly beans in the business. Grab a photo. They aren't shy. This is our Jelly Belly kick line dancers. <laughs> Thank you.
and bomb the base right here. Did you enjoy your tour? Yes. On the count of three, I want everyone to scream Jelly Belly as loud as you can. One, two, three. Jelly Belly! Fantastic. Make sure you have not left any personal belongings on the train. Again, my name is Joey, and I hope you enjoyed your ride on the Jelly Belly Express. Está muy camino para poner ahora mismo, está muy camino para poner el médico.